Hello, my name is Mohamed Bonkusli and I am the IELTS trainer here. Welcome. So today we're going to be talking about IELTS, how to get to the top score, especially in the speaking section in IELTS. Whether you are a student applying for a scholarship or you're going for a job or you're going to travel outside, you're definitely going to be needing IELTS. IELTS lies at the top of that pyramid of the whole English language trip. So let's get right to it. I'm going to be meeting a student and we're going to see what we went through and how does a student reply to a, especially a score of band eight to nine. Let's go. Hello, and uh, what's your name, please? My name is Sami Hajar. <coughs> Sami, may I have your ID, please? Yes, here it is. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Sami, uh, welcome to the speaking part of IELTS, and uh, we're going to be starting with part one. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. So, Mr. Sami, tell me about yourself a little bit. I'm um, actually 20 years old. Mm -hmm. I study computer science. Mm -hmm. uh, I work as a corporate operation coordinator mm -hmm. in projects. Uh, I actually have two brothers and one sister. You study? Yes, oh. I do study. I study computer science, just like I said. Okay, good, good. And Mr. Sami, when was the last time you went to the cinema? I went to the cinema about one year ago with my friends. We watched uh, Top Gun okay. for Tom Cruise and Jennifer Connelly. Uh, it was a box office hit. Uh, the movie was really engaging, actually. Okay. Yes. What kind of a movie was it? It was a movie. It was an action movie, actually. Mm. Okay. Okay. And tell me about cinemas in your country or city. How how popular are cinemas in the where you live in the well, city? Cinemas play the vital role mm -hmm. in my country. Uh, people, Syrian, Syrian people used to go to the cinema since, uh, since the 80s till now, actually. They are really into the cinema. Mm -hmm. And despite the Syrian crisis, people, Syrian people still uh, go there. And the cinemas are still thriving. Okay, which thank is, you. Which is good. And what sorts of films or movies do you like watching? I'm really fond of thrillers like uh, The Silence of the Lambs, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, because they are, I like them because they are full of suspense. They, the plot has a lot of twisted turns. Mm -hmm. The soundtracks are engaging. True. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, such, such type of movies, they keep me in my toes. Okay, thank you. And where do you prefer to watch movies? In the cinema or at home? Well, I'm on the fence because it really mostly depends on the movie itself, mm -hmm. on the type of the movie. For example, movies like uh, action movies and comedy, I tend mm -hmm. to watch them uh, at the cinema, while science fiction movies maybe, and horror movies, I definitely prob I definitely watch them, uh, prefer watching, watching them in at home. Okay, thank you. Because I want to talk about like, you know, festivals and special days in your country as well. Yes. What are the most important festivals in your country? Uh, without a doubt, it's uh, Eid al-Fitr. It's, uh, it's the biggest celebration actually in Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it lasts for three days. Uh, it held after, after Ram the Holy Ramadan. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a lot of activities like uh, we visit relatives uh, in it. We exchange maybe gifts. We enjoying feasts. We buy new clothes. Okay. Yes. Good. Good. And how do people celebrate New Year in your country or city? Actually, we celebrate New Year like most people celebrate. Mm -hmm. We put up uh, some new decorations. Maybe we go together to the city center to watch the uh, to watch the fireworks displays mm -hmm. with my family and friends. The strike when that uh, when the clock strikes twelve, mm. uh, and there is always that feeling of uh, loving and cohesion between the different people from okay. different backgrounds, and uh, thank you, thank you, that's very good. And <clears throat> which festival in another country would you like to go to, and why? Well, uh, definitely Tomorrowland. Uh, I really like this festival. It's a large-scale dance festival. It uh, it held in Belgium. Mm -hmm. uh, it took place every year. And uh, 
people from all over the world come mm. to this festival. Yes, and it's not just the a dance festival, it has a lot of facilities mm -hmm. like swimming pools, amusement parks, and zoos. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to go to part two. Yes. I'm going to give you this cue card. After you look at the question, you have one minute to prepare. You may write notes if you like, yes. and after one minute, you're going to speak for one between one and two minutes. Okay. That's the idea of part two. Okay? okay thank you. you may look at your card. Okay, so you may speak. You have almost two minutes to continue. Go ahead, Mr. Sass. Yes. Uh, currently, we are living in a digital age where searching for information is quite popular among individuals. And needless to say that the internet is the best platform mm -hmm. for collecting information from. Yes. Uh, so I'd like to talk about a time when I needed to search for information about weight loss. Uh, I searched for it two years ago during the lockdown because uh, of the coronavirus. I weighed not 80 kilograms at that time. I was cheesed off and frustrated with being fat. Uh, I searched for the information uh, in websites like Wikipedia, uh, My Fitness Pal, LA Fitness, and other websites. Uh, after that, I switched to YouTube, where uh, I watched uh, videos about exercising and nutrition. And I gained some significant information also from there. Uh, I struggled slightly with finding the best diet to stick to, but at the end, I made up my mind to, to follow a low carb diet, and I aimed to lose uh, two kilograms each month. Thank God, after six months, uh, six months, I lost about uh, eight kilograms, and I was really ecstatic with the results. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really proud of myself. My confidence also has increased. Since going to the gym, good. Uh, I oh, uh, and I think that Thank you. if I haven't gone to the gym at the first place, Thank I would. You. Have, That's okay. That's I would okay. have never been in good shape right now. Okay. okay. How did you feel about the transformation from the eighty kilograms to a much lower I'm weight? Et I'm eternally grateful to myself, actually, okay. because uh, avoiding junk food for a whole period of time. Yeah. Your your friends are eating whatever they want and you are following a diet it's, it's hard actually that's really great. hard it's challenging okay. great thank you okay so i will continue on talking about uh search and information how do you think people search for information nowadays well nowadays most people do their search online mm -hmm. through search engine websites such as google and bing mm -hmm. which i consider them as game changers because they can give you an access to tons of information in less than a second okay. by just one click. And if you want to ask anyone for an information, uh, a piece of information, they'll just they'll just tell you go and Google it. Just uh, Google it. Okay, I agree. But do you think this? Don't you think there's too much information on the on those research or search websites? Yes, there are a lot. So you have to be picky about them. How yeah. can people choose a reliable source? There are some trustworthy sources that mm. you can uh, depend on, like uh, BBC, for example. Okay, thank you. And what information can people get from television as opposed to the search engines? They can get all kinds of, kind of information. Uh, but the most apparent one would definitely be the news, because uh, till now, most people watch uh, the news in, on television. Mm -hmm. Also, channels like uh, National Geographic, um, it provides a plethora of knowledge about mm -hmm. the world that we are living in. So, but I think that in the near future, most people won't be sh using uh, television as their prior source of okay. information. W which leads me to my next question. Do you think libraries are still important in our digital age, in this age of technology? Not that important because most of the students uh, now, currently, they are mm -hmm. using uh, websites like ChatGPT to do their research. Okay. So they can they can depend on on websites rather than libraries. 
That's good. So with the advancement of this chat GBT and the AI generated research engines or search engines, do you think there is much possibility for the truth of information for a reliable resource? Do they provide this? Actually, Websites for, such as GBT? for graduate students, maybe. Okay. Like uh, who are doing master and PhD, mm -hmm. they can they can they they are banned from uh, getting their information on their research from uh, websites like ChatGPT. So mm -hmm. they have to use uh, libraries. So from my own perspective, I believe that we should strike a balance between uh, getting information online and getting them from libraries. All right, and since uh, such websites aren't valid, one hundred percent yet. What's going to make this authority viable? I mean, how can we make sure that this is not plagiarism in terms of graduate studies, the ones you mentioned? Yeah, it's kind of obvious, actually, mm -hmm. because uh, because the information in, in books in the libraries are quite different in the, the order of information, right. I mean. Okay, good. And how do people identify reliable information on the internet? Uh, None of us can assure 100 fully assure 100 percent that this information is reliable. But there are some trustworthy and reliable sources that we can depend on. Do you think it will, this will get better or worse in the future? Uh, the search it will, for the it will right be, information. It will, be, it will be much much worse. worse because, Why do you think because so? Because I believe that uh, just like you said, we are living in digital age. Everything mm -hmm. comes fast. So there will be plenty of information for us in the future. Okay, okay. And is it good for people, or, or if, if good people have more access to information in the future? Can you repeat the question, please? Do you think it's possible or it's good for people to have access for information or more information in the future? Actually, we are enemies to what we don't know. Okay. So the more we know, the better. But uh, on the other hand, I see that getting so much information about people, about uh, maybe it might threaten the privacy mm -hmm. of people, just like what happened in 2014 with okay. Google Glasses. They bought mm -hmm. them out of the market in 2015 because they, they see it as a threat to the privacy of individuals okay. in the society. And how do you think people will be searching for information in the future? Will it become more privatized? It's more open, more closed? Will I think be? that no, it's more open. Mm -hmm. Just like I said, now everything is online. Mm -hmm. With only one click, you can get whatever you want. Okay. So it's accessible, more accessible in the future. Okay. So Sami, thank you. This is the end of the speaking test. And good luck. Thank you. Welcome back. As you saw through the video, the candidate Sami did very well to meet the requirements of an IELTS score band of 8 to 9 in the speaking session. He was very fluent, he used excellent grammatical structures, he used idioms, and he was talking for a lengthy time, which means he, he did well in the fluency. Now, when you go through the IELTS speaking section, you have to think about four criteria. Number one, is the pronunciation. You will be judged by your pronunciation, which means, by the way, your intonation and your accent. So you must have this excellent accent to keep going. Number two, your fluency. You must do very well. For the second section, as you, could, as you saw with Sami, in the second section, he was able to speak for one or one to two minutes to achieve a high fluency level. Number three is the grammatical structures. You have to use a variety of structures for tenses and for other things. And number four is the lexis, which means academic vocabulary. You have to be able to insert academic words into your speaking so you can achieve as much as possible. Anyways, thank you very much for today. I hope you can leave your comments or questions down below so we can answer them and see you soon. Thank you very much.